All right, at the top part of the map, we have our Zerg player, former GSL champion from the team, Startail. He is known by the name. Stati Fruit Dealer. I don't think I get enough fruit in my diet, man. I drink juice, but that's about it. <laughs> should buy some. We should buy some fruit after the cast today. Down here at the bottom of the map, for new hero from Sweden, he is Sasse. Sasse. I'm at, I actually uh, really dislike fruit. I like to oh, drink. Yeah, I like to drink. Right. You know, for example, orange juice is fine. I like to drink fruit juices, but um, eating fruit itself, I'm not a fan of. Well, I'll buy some fruit. You can just come and hang I'll out. I'll come with you. All right. Thank you. You don't have to go alone. You're such a good friend, Wolf. You're a good friend too. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we shared a moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it looks like Sase will not be Forge expanding, which I think is a better decision. I mean, he wants to play really safe here. His GSL life is on the line. He doesn't want to be the foreigner that lost. No, he doesn't want to, no. of course. Now, he does see... Well, he actually didn't check. He was going to try to block a hatchery. It's not... But he actually didn't see... He saw neither the spawning pool nor the extractor here, and... Mm. Uh, He's going to block a hatchery that isn't being planted, so a bit of a mistake by Sasa. He didn't go back to check that he actually has no idea what's going on now. I mean, now he knows it's either a pool first or a extractor first, but he doesn't know which. Yeah, a uh, little bit of misguiding, unfortunately. You know, and like, like we mentioned before, I think nerves are definitely a factor for Sasa a little bit. And after a crazy game like last game, you've still got to be, I mean, both these guys have still got to be kind of recovering from it, you know? It's hard to, like, put a game like that aside so quickly. A proper wall off from Sase. One Zealot will be able to block that quite nicely. Quite nicely. Quite nicely. A proper Zealot. And when will he get his second gas? That's what I'm kind of curious now. about. It's going to be now. Ooh, gas before 20. I always say that could mean DTs. It's pretty common. DTs didn't work out too well for him in game one, so might very well have something a little bit different planned, but every time I see it so early, I just kind of I get this, this like feeling. My You're spy. almost as scared as D of DTs as our toast is. Really I'm not scared of DTs, I just want to be aware of them. I'm not scared. <laughs> just because you killed me with DTs last night when we were playing doesn't mean I'm scared of them. <laughs> Why'd you have to bring that up? <laughs> oh man, I killed you with so many things last night. You got me with uh, every build in the book, man. <laughs> yeah, lucky. It's nothing but luck. <laughs> I'm sure that's what it was. Well, well, I was just expecting an all-in every game, that's it. <laughs> I think we're going to see a one-gate expand, actually, from Sase. Yeah. And, uh... Not a bad choice. Oh, actually going to be adding more gates as part of a wall off first. Oh, interesting. So this is the best way to three-gate expand on a map like this. A map where it's difficult to wall, you want to add your gateways early and make them part of your wall off. Hmm. And then take your nexus. Seems like a good idea to me. Zirkling speed almost done right now. Yeah, and actually... Fruit Dealer is making 14 Zerglings. He wants to put on a lot of pressure. Yeah. And with no Forge and with very few sentries out, he's actually going to potentially force the cancel on the Nexus once or twice. Well, I'm kind of wondering to see if Fruit Dealer is going to try to run these guys in and draw a force field so that his Zergs can come in and Zerglings can come in a little bit later and actually get in. There are two sentries out, though, now. And the rest of the Zergling buddies are about to join up. Uh oh. They're not Sase's buddies, though. Here they come! Are they going to be able to yeah, cause he's gonna cancel? Have to cancel that? I think so. Cancels it, and Force Field goes down. He actually missed with that Force Field a little bit. Yep. Oh, no, he's really trying to sneak in, and now he has the Force Field again. Yeah. And he is out of energy, but luckily for him, he's got more Force Fields warping in here. Yeah, definitely slowing things down now. I mean, you don't want to be floating about 600 minerals at this point in the game. There goes the Nexus again. He's going to try to hold on to it. I think he's going to have a little bit easier time this time with some proper Force Fields. Some proper Ooh. Force Fields. Fruit Dealer's adding a macro hatchery. Yeah. And usually when you see a macro hatchery in a, in a case like this, he's no longer mining gas. He actually might be doing a speedling all in where he just continues to make speedlings and eventually breaks his opponent. Extremely good. Uh, you know, oh, look I at don't that. Think that's what we're going to see. Oh! Oh, he gets some nice. of the Zerglings. Nice little trap there by Sase. And yeah, Fruit Dealer yeah. started mining gas again. I think he's going to actually add a Roach Warren. And the cool thing about this macro hatchery is it allows you to. Just have extra larva to do whatever you want with it. You can drone up heavily. You can switch your unit production quite easily with that macro hatchery. Yeah. And uh, he's not going to be doing the, the heavy speedling all in. To do that, you need to have done a lot more damage with your initial speedlings, which is not the case for Fruit Dealer here. Hmm. 
You know, Sase's force field control, his reaction time has been really good this series. But that overlord, his reaction time was good, but no. just too slow. He's like, well, I just He knew to he was going to die very quickly, but that was all he knew. <laughs> he just had enough time. He just had a lot of time to think about it. Yeah. He's like, oh. That's <laughs> the sound of a despondent overlord about to die. There's the Roach Warren. And so Speedling's trying to sneak in, but unfortunately for them, the wall off is too tight. Yep, it's too tight, man. Somebody's telling me, wall is pretty tight, man. <laughs> Evo Chamber on the way as well, so if you're a dealer playing, pretty safe. Yeah, and these 16 Zerlings that are coming out, though, might not be enough. Yeah. Dealer only has one spine up right now, this and with nice good force point. fields, there are a ton of energy on those sentries. With good force fields, he should be completely fine to, to do a lot of pressure here. He's not actually going to really be risking that much. Look at this. He's going to be able to force himself in this little hole. Oh, Fruit Dealer lets the pylon finish, too. Another warp in on the high ground saves the pylon. Big mistake by Fruit Dealer not to target that down with those Zerglings. Yeah, and, and look at that. Yeah. Sase actually has more units here. This pressure is doing so much. The Stalker is going to get oh. caught, though. Gets poked. And does oh. save that sentry. Nicely done. Fruit so, Dealer making a few roaches right now. Well, Sase is going to need some pretty awesome force fields. You can see he's putting down a robotic space, so he's not going to you know, try to win right here. He's going to try to do some damage, but he's got a longer game plan. Probably. Well, these roaches are the only defense for our Fruit Dealer, but he decides to back away anyways. Well, he's got a good amount of speedlings that look like they might want to flank. Yeah, they have the watchtower, so they know what Sase is doing at all times. They know where his sentries uh -huh. are, whether or not he's retreating to go home or not. These roaches are pressuring up at the ramp. Those three roaches are brave, man. Yeah, Sase. Oh, it looks like he's going Bates for it. Some force fields that may actually trigger Fruit Dealer to use his Zerglings, but he decides not to. He's actually targeting down sentries with those roaches. Nicely done by Fruit Dealer. Yeah, Sase needs a couple stalkers. There they are. Pretty tough to kill off roaches with sentries. Yeah, it takes forever. Yeah. Now, Sase is actually getting... Hold that thought. He's oh. attacking up here at the natural, but the Zerlings are coming back. He's going to need to do some good force fields yet again. Go. And nice good force, force fields, fields he does. Wow. It sounded like Yoda for a second. <laughs> good force fields he does. And Sase, I mean, he's warping in some more units, but Fruit Dealer looking pretty strong right now. I think Sase might lose everything here. Yeah, yeah. it looks like he is going to lose his entire army here. I think he may have just overstepped his boundaries just a little, a little bit there. Yep. Yeah, it was now, looking good, but he pushed it too far. Pushed it a little bit too far. Yep. He was that guy who asked his mom for the candy bar like one <laughs> too many times, and she was like, well, I was going to give it to you, but now, no. You no, can sit no. in the corner and think yep. about what you've done. And he's like, ah, I was just trying to be a little bit more persistent. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't know any better. I'm five. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. I'm turning this thing around. <laughs> You have to wait in the car when I go to the gas station. I will not. You cannot <laughs> come inside and get some bubble gum with me. No crunky bar for you. <laughs> oh man, it's a funny candy bar name here in Korea. Yeah, we have. I like it. We have crunky bars here in Korea. Right. They're pretty good. They're yeah, like crunk crunch bars. The crunky bar. It's a crunky bar, man. Yep. Burrow, Roach Speed, and Aspire all on the way for Fruit Dealer. And Sase actually spots the third base of Fruit Dealer. Hmm. May decide to do something about it. Oh, and actually, he may spot the Spire, oh. which has actually been proxy here. He sees the creep, and he may think to himself, that's a little bit weird to see yeah. a, a spot of creep just out in the middle of nowhere like this. Yeah, well, he just doesn't seem to be too in tune with what's going on with that. And in fact, Fruit Dealer can see the pylon with his Overlord. Yeah. Well, I, it's going to be an interesting situation either way, man. Sase is pushing across the map right now. Yeah, he has some Colossi. He doesn't have a lot of support for them, but even so, Not Fruit yet. Dealer just doesn't have that many roaches, so he can't really make use of the fact that Sase doesn't have a lot of support yet. Yeah, um, I don't know, it's just a weird situation for Fruit Dealer. He's taking damage to his hatchery as well. In the middle of the map, though, Fruit Dealer trying to circle around. Yeah, Sase actually just is being the right amount of aggressive here. Yeah. And Fruit Dealer's kind of constantly got units in the middle of the map that he can't use very well, but I like that he picks off a Stalker here. He's just trying to avoid oh. Sase's army, but Sase's kind of controlling how this engagement goes, and... Oh, he's gonna get everything here, too. He's gonna want to target down that sentry at the very least. Ooh, Burrows. But where is the Observer? It's somewhere, but not around, I guess. Alright. Burrows very useful. Burrow is very useful, and Sase... Indeed. 
actually is able to see the spire with the Zelda warped in. Yep. He does see it. He does know about it now. But he's actually only making Colossi still. He hasn't really even started more stalker production. Now adds his Twilight Council, which is something he's going to want to have against those. I, I'm not sure why he's chasing these roaches so much. I mean, he has enough defense at home that I feel like he can just push right now, but I don't know. What do you well, think? Um, you know, what's interesting is, rather than going for Mutalis, Fruit Dealer wants to go for Corruptors. Now, mm -hmm. Corruptors, of course, are quite good against Colossi, but even yeah. Mutas can do well against Colossi on this map because of the way the Colossi walk around the terrain here. Exactly. And yeah. Mutas are great for counter on this map, so I'm a little bit... Um, you know, I think it's a little bit strange that Fruit Dealer went for Corruptors, but that's perfectly fine. That can still work. Um, I don't know if Fruit Dealer's going to be able to hold this attack, though. He doesn't have we'll very see. many. He's got 21 Roaches and 4 Corruptors, and that's it. Sase does have a good amount of Stalkers, too, to back up these Colossi. They're going to do quite well against the Roaches themselves as well. Sase just looks very hesitant right now. Fruit Dealer's constantly counterattacking, but Sase is doing the right amount of poking and not turning back. Oh, he's got to be careful, though. He doesn't want to lose this Colossi. See, he's just got enough units at home to where he doesn't even need to send his main army. He's yeah, totally I, fine. I don't know why he's Sase is actually home. showing us how to be aggressive against a counterattacking Zerg. You just make enough stag defense at home and, you know, just continue to be pressuring with your main army. He's actually going to send yeah. the rest of his army home just because he wants to trap these units. But I think Sasa is really showing here just how aggressive you can be even if your opponent is constantly threatening you with counterattacks. But if it were Mutas, the situation would be very different. He would very. not be able to just leave cannons at the front of his base. He'd have to have cannons in both of his mineral lines as well. And he'd have to cover something for his gateways in the middle of his... It's just very difficult to deal with Mutas without an army at home. This like you mentioned, this way is, to put it. it's really cool though that, you know, Sase is doing this. He is about 50 supply down now, but he's got a much, much stronger army. But, and that's the thing too, is Fruit Dealer with all these little counterattacks isn't able to really get a big, scary army right now. He's trying his best right now. He does have plus two. Sase has one, one. The Zerglings of Fruit Dealer don't have any upgrades though. And he's trying to make those kind of one of his real damaging units here. But Sase just being so careful with how he pokes with these units, these roaches. Yeah. Are going to catch more oh. reinforcements. I love this by Fruit Dealer just continuing to try to catch reinforcements with just a group of roaches. Why not? Gets one. Blink is completed, so the other three blink to safety. And we've kind of reached, I think, the breaking point of this game. There's going to be some action. You're going to have to see who comes out on top. There's a lot of stalkers. A couple of mortals in there as well to help out. Sase's composition is absolutely great. Fruit Dealer has a better concave at the bottom of the ramp. Oh, but he's got to be careful. Sase keeps baiting him up. He's taking a lot of damage. The yep. roaches on the other side are trying to flank a little bit. Force uh, some force fields to get dropped down. He wants to use those roaches to catch reinforcements, but now that there's pylons here, the reinforcements are not going to be, of course, coming from the main. Here he he's goes. going. Guardian Shield is up, and Fruit Dealer, some of his corruptors are out of position. More roaches rallying out here. Remember, he has plus two on those. Oh, Stop nice blink forward, there. But the roaches are doing oh. so much damage. Nice yeah. corruption on all of those colossi, and now it's starting to corrupt some of the stalkers as well. Those colossi fell so fast. I can't believe it. And, and with good blink stalker no. micro from Sase, he may end up coming out even for a little while. But yeah. Fruit Dealer has 14 more roaches on the way, and I think Sase may be dead. This may be the end uh, of his Code A run. I thought it looked so good for him for a second there, but yeah, that blink ahead seemed like a good idea at the time, but it really let the roaches add their fire to the DPS of the Corruptors as well. And suddenly things looking a little bit grim for our foreign Protoss player here. Yeah, and Speed Overlord comes into the base of Sausage, just getting some additional scouting. Mm -hmm. And Fruit Dealer has a Burrowed Roach at the third bases um, uh, that Sausage might ooh, consider taking and ooh, catching some stalkers here. Yep. Fruit yeah. Dealer now with more than twice the supply of Sausage. Infestation put on the way, plus some melee attack. 36 Zerglings. And these stalkers are actually uh, dying to spine crawlers. It's going to be very, very difficult for Sase to think about taking a third or anything like that. Is he going to save this hatchery with drones and roaches? I think he Looks will. like he will, actually. Yeah. Nicely Sase done by Fruit Dealer. Sase just doing everything he can here, but I don't think it's going to be enough. GG. GG. Fruit uh, Dealer ends up winning 2-1. That's it. I mean, Sase looked pretty good for a little while there, but that last engagement positioning is everything, and Fruit Dealer comes out on top. He's still playing the game right now. I doesn't know it's over or something. <laughs> He's like, wait, wait a second. Oh, so... So Fruit Dealer stays alive. Sase put up a really good fight. Yeah, he did. Say. Yeah, game two especially, I really enjoyed watching. And, you know, he just held off an all-in in game two. That was really, you know, 
I, I would say it was actually a pretty decently well executed all in from Fruit Dealer, but yeah. And Sase was able to overwhelm him in that game, but even so, Fruit Dealer just looks so much stronger in the whole yeah, series. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. I mean, Fruit Dealer, again, you know, he's playing a lot better than we've seen him play lately, too. It seems like he's really taken he's his practice. He's gotten serious. Yeah, it's like Star Tale. So, no, there was no Star Tale serious. Was there ever a player Epic called so Serious? Epic So Serious, Oh, that's right. Serious for you. That's right. I feel like Fruit Dealer has really put a lot of more effort into practicing since he's joined Star Tale as well, it seems like. So, um... Yeah, I think it's paid off. He's looking good. Yeah, he's looking good. Um, you know, Sase did his best there. Yeah. And uh, his timing attacks didn't quite work out. You know, yeah. He didn't, he didn't make a third base, really, in those games. Except, of course, the game that he was so far ahead, he, he was never really worried about making a third base. You know, mm -hmm. he was like, well, I can just make all these bases because you have no army. Whereas in the other games, there were times where he could have taken a third, but I feel like he was a little bit nervous about yeah. taking a third. He wasn't sure if Fruit Dealer was just going to counterattack him. That was definitely part of it, for sure. Yeah. But... Overall, not bad. Gave us a really entertaining game game, too. I love seeing air uh, strategies like that. I mean, we really haven't seen that since Guinea Pig and, like, open season two, so very cool to see that happen and kind of see it work, too. I yeah. had fun with it. So, oh, well. I mean, he's. Uh, I think he's still going to be in Korea for a while training. Yeah, I think he plans to stay a little Maybe bit longer a little while, for yeah. sure. So you guys will see him again. You'll see us again in yes. five minutes.